Joining us now to break down the stark contrast between the Republican Party and the Democrat Party is Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. And Governor, we just rolled a bunch of, we did a sound, uh, monologue and we a bunch of, of pictures of, you know, Trump the Republican is, is at a, a funeral for a fallen NYPD officer. Heartfelt, sorrowful. And then you show Joe Biden, who's tonight raising $25 million uh, amongst liberal Democrats in the city of New York with Lizzo, the, the, the rapper, and a handful of former presidents, and Stephen Colbert. What a stark contrast in one single day. Sir, Republican Party, you, Florida, conservatives are pro-law enforcement. The other party, not sure what they are. Well, Eric, I was uh, in San Francisco last summer, and I was walking down the street, and, and obviously they've got a lot of problems there. Some of the residents recognized me, liberal residents, weren't too happy, had some choice words, fine. But, you know, the police officers there came over to me, and they thank me for their support. And I'm over in Florida, but they get no support from these Democrat politicians. It used to be police officers, a lot of them were Democrats. That's changed. The Democratic Party has turned their back on law enforcement. They embrace the criminal element and let the inmates run the asylum and a lot of these people. And, you know, Obama and Biden and Clinton can go raise $25 million because they're in the upper echelon. So they're immune from their own policies. The people that it really hurts are the people who are more working class and middle income Americans. Democratic Party has turned their back on them. They're really become the party of the elites. You know, I, I think back to, um, you know, Biden, again, you're right, Biden, Clinton, and Obama, three of the four living presidents that are able to be there, because um, uh, Carter wouldn't, wouldn't be able to travel, but three of the four living presidents, uh, Democrats are, are raising money in a city that's just lawless. There's people dying. There's people being pushed in front of uh, moving trains. Homelessness is rampant. Illegals are flooding the streets. They're beating up cops. And then the one Republican is over there in, in respect, he pays respects for the, for the men in blue. That's a thin blue line there on my, on my lapel. It, it, what a stark contrast. And then it, I think back, Governor, you know, that, that, that um, dignified transfer when we had the, the service members from Afghanistan coming back, and Biden is checking his watch at the time because he couldn't be bothered doing absolute minimum. They don't care about law enforcement. They don't care about the military, do they? Well, not only was he doing that, uh, he obviously was the, the architect of the catastrophe in Afghanistan, which was humiliating for our country. It did lead to the, the unnecessary death of 13 service members. But then since his reelection campaign, when he was asked if he would have done anything different, he said, no, he wouldn't have done anything different. Are you kidding me? Uh, a president that presides over a fiasco like that, where American servicemen are killed, wouldn't have second thoughts and wouldn't have wished he could have done things better. Uh, it just shows you, uh, you know, I think some of the people uh, in this liberal elite, they, they have a lot of contempt for the people that put on various uniforms uh, and serve, and it's sad to see. And you did, and we thank you for your service. We thank you for our freedom. Governor, a couple of things. Almost nightly, we talk about how how. What a great job you're doing in the state of Florida, the freest state, the greatest state in the union. You're doing a fantastic job. Disney is, uh, you had a big win uh, against Disney in the last couple of days. Tell us about that. Well, Eric, this goes back a couple years. I mean, we uh, did parents' rights in education bill, which said we're not going to be injecting gender ideology and transgenderism into the schools. Disney fought us on that. It was a huge mistake for them to get involved in that. A lot of people thought that we would lose that fight just because Disney's so powerful. Turns out we stood our ground. We did it. We also said Disney had this arrangement where they were effectively running their own local government for their own interest, not for the public's interest. So the Florida legislature changed that, took away their own government, and we now have a state control board there. That was challenged in court. That lawsuit is now withdrawn. And then in the 11th hour before the state took control of this district, they did all these uh, funky covenants. And the corporate media at the time was saying, oh, Disney outmaneuvered Florida. They did this. And we knew these were not valid, but that's how the press was playing it. Well, now Disney's agreed in a settlement that all of those things that the media was saying they were so smart to do at the 11th hour 
are null and void, just like we said. So every action we've taken has been upheld. Uh, I think the controversy is behind us. There's a new sheriff in town. It's going to be a new way of doing business, but ultimately it's going to be good for the state. And uh, we've got a lot of great things in that area. There's a new Universal Park opening next uh, year, Epic Universe. Uh, I think Disney has opportunities to maybe expand, but that's going to be done in conjunction with uh, the state of Florida in what we think is the best interest. So it's a win for Florida taxpayers, and it's going to be a win for, uh, for transparent government. Well, Florida is where woke goes to die, I think you said, and I'm so on board with that slogan. I love that one. Also, Governor, yesterday you made some announcements. You, you made some movement against squatters. Now, we, the reason why we know about squatters so much is, well, there was the, the, the Venezuelan guy who said, come on over, he's illegal. Come on over, we're going to just go squat in some homes because they don't get thrown out. Apparently, that's not going to be the case in the state of Florida, about right? Yeah, and when I see uh, news reports coming out of New York City where a landlord will go to evict people out of their house who never had a right to be there in the first place, and the police end up being told to arrest the homeowner rather than the people that were squatting, you know this world's been turned upside down. So this whole idea of squatting is a scam. The notion that you can just move into somebody's house, uh, be there for 30 days, and all of a sudden be able to assert rights against the homeowner is a total farce. So in Florida, we've put an end to it. Now, it hasn't been the same problem here as California and New York, because I think we have a different culture. But now, if someone were to try that in Florida, and we have a lot of seasonal residents. Eric, you know in South Florida, there's people that go elsewhere for the summer. So if they go somewhere else over the summer and someone chooses to move in, uh, they come back, they call the sheriff, and the sheriff kicks them out immediately. So we have ended the squatting scam in the state of Florida. And yes, we see the news reports. We see this, this illegal alien influencer that was doing that. And we understand how absurd it is. But this is a central issue for a free society. If you don't have strong private property rights, you are not going to end up having a free society. So Florida, we are very strong on your property right. You purchase that home. Uh, that is your property. Someone can't just come in and commandeer it uh, against your consent. You know, we've had a couple of sheriffs on the show in the, in the last week or so talking about, you know, we brought them on because they were, they were tough on crime. They were tough on criminals. One of them said, listen, you have a right. If someone comes into your house, you have the right to, to shoot them. And you do. You do. And, and use that right. He said, just make sure you aim because we don't want to put them in jail and spend your money for a long time. Just aim properly. We brought them on and we had another sheriff with a roadside saying, this guy, this guy right here isn't going to do this anymore in the state of Florida to a person, to a sheriff, to a deputy. I say, you know, how, why are you so good? Why, how do you have the, the guts or the balls to do this or the colonies to do this? And to a person, they say, because our governor backs us. You back the blue, and that matters, Governor. I, I just wanted to throw that in there. Yeah, I, no, I, look, I mean, yeah, I, I, I think so, but I also think we have a lot of really good sheriffs that get elected. Uh, they've got strong support from their communities. And then we've got a lot of very professional deputies. But just think about this squatter law. You know, if you're in a place like Polk County in central Florida uh, and you're squatting in somebody's house, that homeowner could then call Sheriff Grady Judd uh, to go set people. You don't want to be messing with Grady Judd. And there's a lot of sheriffs like that in Florida. So it really is a team effort. We're proud to lead and set the tone. We have good policy. We've supported them. But those guys, when the rubber hits the road, they're the ones that are getting it done. And they deserve an awful lot of credit. Yeah, but Governor, there's a lot of good, there's a lot of good cops in New York that don't have the support of the higher ups. And it, it makes it very difficult. Difficult for them to do their job. I want to get this in. I know you got to go. I want to get this in. RFK Jr. yesterday picked um, Nicole Shanahan as a, his her, uh, vice presidential running mate. She ends up, turns out that she's a longtime supporter of liberal causes, including George Gascon, the very liberal prosecutor in California, Pete Buttigieg, and such. Here's my point. Here's the question we have to you, and we'll be asking all day, frankly. So now with this new ticket, doesn't that kind of ensure that that ticket is going to pull more from the Democrats? It's more like a Democrat. looks more like a Democrat ticket than, than Trump, the Republican, for the general election. Well, it's certainly uh, an indication that his instincts are, are left. Uh, and I think people have known that. I think he's made an effort to try to appear, appear more in the center. But as you know, when you're underwriting the campaign of somebody like Gascon in L.A., one of the most notorious Soros 
progressive left prosecutors, when you underwrite all these very left-wing causes, you know, those are actions that speak louder than words. So a candidate, a vice presidential candidate, can go up and start saying things that sound reasonable, but you look at that track record, I think that's going to strike a lot of voters as being very far left. And, you know, I think most voters that are disenchanted with Biden think he's been too far left. We don't need to go even further left than that. Are you kidding me? Well, all right, we're going to leave there, sir. Look, Trump hasn't picked his vice president yet. Um, I'll ask you it again every time we're on. Would you? <laughs> could you? Tell me, where, where are, are you? Well, it's the same thing I said. But, but I do got to tell you this, Eric, because you had asked me, you know, I've got a first grader, a kindergartner, and a preschool, and you'd ask me if we gotten a dog yet. At the time, we hadn't. Last month, we adopted a dog from the rescue shelter, so we now have a young pup running around. We're going to do the genetic test. It's a Shiba Inu mix, so we'll see what all the breeds. Uh, but the kids love it. But I will tell you, my wife and I do all the work, and the kids get all the benefit of playing with the dog. But it has enlivened our family, and I know you're a big dog lover, too. Oh, major dog lover. I commend you for, for adopting, especially rescue, and uh, those, those Shibas are, are fighting dogs. And um, did you answer the VP question? I, is that what did I hear? Yes, I'd love to. Or just no? re, just replay replay the last time you asked me <laughs> for it. All right, <laughs> good enough. Good enough, Governor. If it, if it happens to happen, we, I'm all for it, as you know. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Eric.